May 8th, Benjamin Breckenridge Warfield. Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. Warfield was one of the greatest American theologians of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. His education spanned two continents, and he could have chosen to teach and travel extensively across the U.S. and throughout Europe, but he chose instead to remain close to home in order to care for his wife. This decision proved to benefit the church at large, as Warfield penned a steady stream of articles, reviews, lectures, collections of sermons, and monographs. On this date, in 1875, after he had spent two years as a student at Princeton, Warfield was licensed to preach. He received his divinity degree a year later. Warfield became the editor of the Princeton Theological Review and taught at Western Theological Seminary and then at Princeton. Today's story is set in Warfield's classroom. When you're in a position of power, protect the intimidated. The commotion of chatter filled Professor Warfield's lecture hall, and the next class of students quickly made their way to their seats, eager to hear the Warfield lecture. The professor's unparalleled intellectual prowess spanned the world of theology, and his agile mind lined up scientific facts with faith. As the clock struck the top of the hour, Warfield called the lecture hall to order. This collegiate classroom, which had been described as his domain, fell immediately silent. In his typically deliberate voice, he greeted the students warmly, and he briefly outlined the agenda. Then he glanced down the student roster and called the first young scholar forward for the customary before lecture quiz on the assigned reading, which dealt with a question, do miracles still happen? The student stood and strode to the front of the room, the leather heels of his Congress boots clicking rhythmically across the hardwood floor. As the young man approached, Warfield asked the first question. The student answered and Warfield posed another question. The student paused, then thoughtfully replied to the professor with his best answer. Yet, the longer he spoke, the more his flawed logic revealed a thread of confusion, even doubt, about the meaning of what he had read. He had let his understanding of the material be influenced by his own opinion about whether miracles still happen. With a series of nods, Warfield affirmed the young student and patiently waited for him to finish. With a twinkle in his eye and a knowing smile, he posed another question, his words forming as if they walked on velvet. The overly confident student floundered, now obviously aware of his problematic answer, and he blushed. One by one, his fellow students across the lecture hall leaned in, waiting to see what would happen next. The student on the hotspot stammered, shuffled his feet, and hemmed and hawed his way firmly into a conversational corner. The lecture hall was silent. Finally, Warfield spoke. In the kind and corrective and inescapably accurate way he always spoke, he said, gentlemen, I like the supernatural. Now he turned to the entire class. With a wink and a chuckle, Warfield began shoring up the shortcomings in the young scholar's thinking, which were rooted in his opinions rather than in scripture. Warfield guided his students back to the eternal truths he had staked his life and scholarly reputation on. All of scripture is inspired by God. It authoritatively exists without any need of additional validation by human opinion or any scientific fact. As the living word of God, scripture stands alone, without qualification, as unique among all texts for all time. And by these definitions, the scriptures are supernatural and miraculous indeed. Warfield paused for a moment to let his words sink in, turned to the quizzee and asked, is there any question you would like to ask? The student shook his head, no. His look of confusion and embarrassment was replaced by a broad smile. Professor Warfield then turned to the class as he did at the end of every student's quiz and asked, has anyone a question? 
It's like the word of God says in Psalm 25, 5. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. How could you allow the eternal truth and reliability of God's word to impact an area of misbelief in your life today? When you are in a position of power, protect the intimidated. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.